Savell, would you like to start in terms of who you are? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Danielle. My name is Devel Kent. I am one of the counselors with Counseling Services, and I am a part of the wonderful PGCC Wellness Center team. Thank you all for attending and coming to join us today. Excellent. Thank you, Devel. Yes, one of our great counselors in the Wellness Center. Um, Nurse Ann, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, um, I am one of the nurses in the Wellness Center. So again, I'm part of the wellness team at PGCC. Thank you. And then um, I am uh, Dr. Danielle. I'll be moderating and trying to take care of some of the uh, technical things uh, with our program today. Uh, and um, so thank you to everyone who is joining us uh, today. Nurse Ann, would you like to get us started with um, some information that you have regarding the negative effects of vaping and inhaling and smoking? Yes, yes thank you. I, I would be very happy to begin. Um, well, one thing we want to say uh, particularly about vaping, because we certainly know more about smoking, uh, simply because it's been around for so much longer. And in each case, it involves nicotine, but we really still don't know the long, long-term effects of vaping. Um, I certainly can remember uh, that in the 60s, uh, smoking was really not seen as a problem, and nicotine was not seen as a problem. I have to admit I was a young child in the 60s, and I can recall my father coming home from an air flight for, for business, and he was not a smoker, but he would have a package of cigarettes because you would get them on an air <laughs> in the 60s. And so my father would come home and smoke a pack of cigarettes, which was very unknown to us because we never really saw them. Um, pregnant women smoking in the 60s and the maybe it started changing a bit in the 70s. But truly, that was also not seen as a problem. It's very, very hard for all of us to believe such things. However, Things have changed because there's been long-term long studies. So we know that's one of the reasons why we know how many effects there are from tobacco. And again, because vaping is relatively new, well, we know tobacco and um, nicotine go way back, even prior to the 60s for certain because, as you know, Maryland is a tobacco racing uh, state, particularly in, in the southern Maryland area. Um, we still don't know what the effects of vaping are. So it may take many, many, many more years. But we do know, as we were just um, educated on our uh, little video, that vaping companies try to claim things like no nicotine. But they found that even these ones claiming to be nicotine free actually do have nicotine in it. And the labels are not always correct. And the majority of them do have the nicotine. And as they mentioned, the chemicals that are involved with nicotine and the vaping, the formaldehyde, who would even want to think you have that in your body? And heavy metals such as nickel, tin, lead. All these things, which are very high with cancer, all kinds of cancers. That's the other amazing thing about a nicotine. You think to yourself, that just involves lungs. Oh, my goodness, no. I would have to say, if you look at any type of cancer, head, neck, bladder, heart, uh, everything, just go on the whole system, you would be having something to do with the effects that nicotine has on the body. So the system effects, we're going to start with the skin because it does impede blood flow, slows the healing of the wounds. So you're not going to be able to heal as easily. 
also eczema and psoriasis. There is definitely more eczema and psoriasis, uh, again, just because of the effects of skin health. Um, we, again, have mentioned the lungs, of course, which is so very obvious, and the heart, which has to be as obvious because the uh, blood is pumped through the heart. Um, you have cardiovascular problems. That would be a um, increase in heart rate and blood pressure. Um, you have um, lungs and, um, and the respiratory system which of course there's severe damage with um, the bronchitis, the pneumonias, something they call popcorn lung, which is our very small, small, small little airways in the bottom. And they call it popcorn because they open and close so quickly. Um, and those become uh, you know, very um, uh, blocked. And again, add to that bronchitis. Uh, we know death has occurred. I mean, we absolutely know that because there has been many cases that we've seen in the media. And um, nicotine intoxication because of just the overexposure to it in the, in the liquid of the, um, the uh, vaping, if you're doing that on a very regular basis. Um, affecting your teeth and gums, yes, too. It reduces the blood flow there, not getting enough oxygen and, and nutrients. And um, the gums can recede. You can certainly have um, same sort of uh, problems with just um, uh, the color, coloring of the teeth, uh, more of a yellow. Um, and we mentioned, again, the fact that the skin is affected, but also just even there's been reports of increased acne around the chin and the mouth, which may have to do with just, you know, having, having it around your chin and mouth. Um, and the, as the video mentioned, just killing the brain cells. And that's really because of the, um, the heavy metals that we just mentioned. Um, sleeping difficulties and sleeping conditions because of the risk that that has, uh, again, with the heart and the lungs and disrupting your sleep. And um, even though they come up with some of these, what they would maybe even consider less harmful and holistic, uh, things that do include some psychoactive component, the THC, but also what looks to be okay, such as inhaling vitamin E, it still has uh, severe effects on the body. So um, there's just a lot there that we still need to learn about vaping. Thank you. Thank you, Nurse Ann. Wow, that was a plethora of information. Let's see if we have yes. any questions. I see DeVell has um, asked uh, individuals in the chat if there are any questions. So we'll um, take a few uh, seconds to wait there. I can ask, does anybody have any yes. experience with a recall of those cigarettes coming off of the plane in the 60s? Does anybody else have that recall? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? I guess they smoked on flight. I don't know. <laughs> I was too young to ask. Well, I, I do remember um, as a military brat flying. And yes, there was smoke in the cabin. People <laughs> would smoke in the airplane. Yes, that I do remember. Yes, yes. Oh, actually, now that I'm thinking back. There was a smoking section and a non-smoking section. Do you remember that now? Mm -hmm, I do. Not that yeah, it made yeah. a difference. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it made a difference. I can say that I just remember everywhere where you can't smoke now, you could. Back in the day mm -hmm. when I was little, I remember places like McDonald's, IHOP, Burger King shopping malls I anywhere you could smoke. I remember seeing, you know, s smoking tables at fast food restaurants. And it's so funny that nowadays just the thought of that is very intrusive. 
you know, at least for me, just the thought of, you know, being in a restaurant with friends and family and right to the booth next to me, there's a party <laughs> of however many people and they're just, you know, smoking it up. Next to me. I could see how really, really uncomfortable and offended I would be. But I just remember just in retrospect, you know, just listening to, you know, the airplane situation. And it makes sense because people literally could smoke anywhere and it was okay. The only thing was you had to have ashtrays and there was a little note that said smoking table or smoking section or something to that effect. And it's just, it's just amazing <laughs> how things are different now. <laughs> mm. Like I hear the question that I wonder and I can't recall, but was there ever smoking allowed in movie theaters. Hmm. I bet if you watch the old 1940s movies, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah, they I'm sure they, they smoked everywhere other than what we could think. They were probably smoking in the hospitals. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> Around the oxygen machine. <laughs> exactly. Because, again, oh, I mean, there was there wasn't an appreciation for all of the side effects. I mean, would they be offering cigarettes that much if somebody knew? But it's money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and now with all we know about secondhand smoke, you know, the idea of, um, of being in a car, right? Uh, and someone else is smoking in that car. And thinking, well, it's just that person who's smoking. It's not affecting me. And now we know differently. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, in fact, I think there are even um, laws where you can't smoke with children in the car. I'm going to have to look that up. I think there. I had heard that there was. And, you know, Danielle, as I just, again, you, you all are just taking me down memory lane. I remember how every vehicle had a cigarette lighter in it. Mm-hmm. And yes. now that they're at, now they're actually vehicle options that don't come with cigarette lighters. And that's the norm. Yeah. Well, yeah what are those? <laughs> 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 Are those for fuses? Oh, I know what they've converted them into. They've converted them into USB ports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, USB ports. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. So, Nurse Ann, in, in the work that you've done over the years, you've really seen a progression of, of the way in which society has um, dealt with the, the social issue of smoking. Um, now with, with vaping and they're saying there's some research, at least vaping was given a, a green light because it was suggested that it was safer uh, than um, cigarettes or viewed as a step down um, in, in your opinion, can it still be viewed as a step down from cigarettes? I think you're correct to say that's how people view it. However, some people um, are so highly addicted to nicotine. It's again, like we said, they, um, the there is still nicotine and that would maybe even make you continue vaping forever. <laughs> Just because of the addictive effects. Ah. Ah. So it's not about the act of cutting down. It's more mm -hmm. so the act of having to cut out the addictive factor of nicotine. I would say that's true because the recommendations are <laughs> always to go with, you know, your advice of your doctor and maybe even go with things like the nicotine patches as opposed to vaping, if you want to, you know, cut down on nicotine, go with the um, 
gum, you know, go with the various things that are available that are designed to help you, you know, really stop smoking because of the nicotine and the addictive property. Okay. Okay. All right. And and those would be more uh, advantageous to take that step down approach. Yeah, I, uh, I would say that's what the literature says. Yes, they would be more advantageous. Okay. Well, just following up on my assertion, uh, it says legislation banning smoking in cars with children has been introduced, but not yet finally passed into law. Um, and there's a couple of places where they've tried. The District of Columbia, Kansas, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Mm. You know, I think that just goes to show how much power and influence these big tobacco companies have. Because how how can we not pass legislation on something like that that protects our children? Like, why, why is it a battle? <laughs> why are there failed attempts? But it's like Nurse Ann said, you know, tobacco companies are big business and tobacco production and tobacco consumption as well as tobacco sales has been around for hundreds of years. You know, in, in you know, indigenous to Maryland and many other places, tobacco was a cash crop. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 just interesting. Wow. Um let's go ahead with another um public service. Excellent tea. All righty. Be right back. All right. So let's. So cute. So what did you think about that particular PSA? Public service announcement. Um, I did not see it. it. I'm still on the slide that's up about where for oh, shock. Yeah, did anybody yeah. else see? Okay. No, we didn't. And um Michelle asked in the chat, could we get a link for the first video? It was very informative. Sure will. Yes. Okay. Let me go back and pull that up then. Shucks. So Michelle, I guess towards the end of the uh, program, uh, a link will be up so you could uh, have that particular video or any other videos that you feel as though were informative to you um, at your disposal for everyone.
Yes, that's true, Devel. In fact, uh, remember the um, Chantal had composed uh, a list, and so we would be able to uh, disseminate that if they like. All right, so I will try to pull up that one again. In the meantime, I'm going to pull up a different one. Here we go. Share the audio. Okay, I'm hoping this works. Here it goes. Smoking for seven years, but it wasn't cigarette for choice. After Two hundred years in 2003, the electronic cigarette electronic was invented in China, and since then, the use of e-cigarettes, also called vaping, has grown exponentially around the world. E-cigarettes are electronic devices that vaporize a flavored liquid. They all used to look like cigarettes, but now they come in many shapes and sizes. Many look like pens or box. This one, a power source. A lithium battery to e-liquid. Three, e-liquid or e-juice, which usually contains flavors and nicotine. Which and four, a cartridge or tank, which is filled with e-liquid. Heating the e-liquid creates a cloud of vapor that looks like smoke, but without a lot of the lethal components contained in tobacco smoke. Many people assume e in traditional cigarettes because they don't burn anything or create tar in your lungs. But it took almost seven thousand years to realize that tobacco causes lung cancer, throat and mouth cancer, causes heart and strokes, and damages the lungs. E-cigs, meanwhile, have only been around a little over a decade. just hasn't been enough time to figure out what effects them. That's causing increased heart rate and blood pressure. Nicotine also has powerful effects on the brain. It releases rewarding neurotransmitters in the brain, like people feel more alert about when and changes brain chemistry. It is a stimulant making people feel more alert, but when it goes away, people crave it even more. It can interfere with the body's own natural ability to make dopamine and soon comparable to heroin and cocaine. Besides nicotine, e-cigarettes contain chemical solvents. When heated very high by some of the new e-cigarette devices, these solvents can be transformed into formaldehyde, which is a carcinogen. It causes cancer. These observations are concerning, but we really do not know what the long-term effects from inhaling these chemicals in your lungs will be. e cig contain many other chemicals to generate flavors. In fact, there are almost 8,000 different flavors available today, so we don't know very much about we do know that some of the butter flavorings contain diacetyl, which is famous for causing popcorn. Popcorn lung is a disease called bronchiolitis obliterans, which is basically an irreversible scarring and destruction of the delicate lung tissue that can kill you. Wow, just the thought of a carcinogen and something that we are inhaling. I don't know about anyone else, but that's that's a frightening thought. And so in the chat, we want to know what is something that stuck out to you from this video that we just saw. You can either respond in the chat or take yourself off of mute and just uh, communicate. Any thoughts? I know one thought for me is I was amazed that there are over 8,000 flavors. <laughs> wow, that's that's very enticing to someone. <laughs> 
you know, um, that was something that was a takeaway from me. I, I didn't know that there were so many different flavor options over 8,000 like that. That's, a, that's, that's very, very interesting. But what about some of you all in that are participants? Um, anything that stuck out to you or anything was interesting? Yeah, acetone was included in e-cigarettes. Yeah, how about that? Oh, you're muted, Danielle. Oh, we still can't hear you. Oh, I think I I think I heard something. Okay, we do apologize for the technical difficulties. And so at this point, does anyone have any questions in regards to the information that was heard from this point on or thus forward? Now would be the time for us to uh, engage in those questions. Okay, so with that being said, um, we are going to transition on to um, the discussion again. Uh, Nurse Ann, did you have any more parting information in regards to you know negative effects on the body or any other medical related information regarding vaping and inhaling? I think that um, the you know, kind of physical part is covered. So there's so much more, as we know, with the emotional and the mental. So, yes, I, I would say that was it for me for now. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we want to transition into looking at vaping from a addiction perspective. And I want to start by saying there are two major or main reasons how and why vaping is addictive. The first is the obvious that there is nicotine in the vape, as they call it, the vape juice or the vape flavored chemical. Um, the other thing is the activity of vaping to a lot of individuals is what is addictive as well, because you have to think about this. From a minor or an adolescent perspective, vaping is a, you know, is perceived, falsely perceived, that is, as a child alternative to adult smoking. Right, because the myth is it isn't smoke, it isn't tobacco, and so it's just vapors. And I remember when vaping really became popular, and there were merchants 
who were selling, you know, vapes and vaping materials, you know, their sales pitches, oh, it's healthy, it's harmless. And so that is inviting for children. And so as a child, the activity of quote unquote doing something adult can be addictive. Also, the activity of participating in the inhaling and the blowing smoke, the behavior in itself can also be addictive to the point where there were studies that showed adolescents and individuals of um, under adult ages are exhausting their allowances, they're unfortunately they're stealing things to get money to vape. The, the whole vaping situation became a culture. And so similar to how we have individuals who can be addicted to playing video games, addicted to uh, any other activity socially, you'll find that that's the same with vaping. And so that's the social component of, you know, how vaping is addictive. There is the behavior and there is the culture of it. But some other things you want to think about is the nicotine addiction that a lot of people don't think about. And as Nurse Anne mentioned, although they may say that there are some vaping uh, items or products out there that are 100% nicotine free, as she, you know, educated us on, there is actually nicotine in that. And so what you want to be mindful of is a few of these questions that help us really assess whether we are experiencing some addiction. And what that is, is, you know, do you continue to vape, you know, even though you want to stop? you know, or think that it's hurting you in some way, but you continue to participate in the behavior. That's a potential red flag that there may be some type of addiction or some dependency happening there. Also, or at least abuse. another thing is, ah, yes, and abuse. I see we're back. <laughs> glad, glad to have you back because we, we could hear you. Um, do you feel anxious or irritable when you want to use vaping products, but you can't? Um, are you still vaping after getting in trouble or some negative impact has occurred in your life in some way? Have you tried to stop but couldn't stop? And finally, do you feel like you've lost control over the ability to withdraw or abstain from vaping. So if you answer yes to any of these particular questions, you might be leading towards an addiction or an abuse and or a chemical dependency to nicotine. And so before we move on, because I want to talk about what are some nicotine withdrawal symptoms, I wanted to know, does anyone have any questions based on, you know, those series of questions that was presented? Okay, cool. So we're going to go right into what are some nicotine withdrawal symptoms that may be experienced? Feeling irritable, restless or jittery, having headaches increased sweats, feeling sad or down, feeling anxious or nervous, feeling tired or groggy, having trouble thinking clearly or concentrating, having trouble sleeping, feeling intense increased amounts of hunger, and having intense cravings to vape. And so there are many more, but these are some of the most common withdrawal signs that we see with nicotine, uh, excuse me, nicotine withdrawal. And that's similar to regular tobacco products that have nicotine in it, as well as these vaping products that contain nicotine in it. And so these are some things that you want to be mindful of. And the other thing that's important to point out is the more that the more and the longer you abstain from you know the vaping activity these withdrawal symptoms will decrease in intensity and at some point they'll no longer be an experience that you're experiencing so in the beginning you know trying to abstain and quit 
from using vape. These are some withdrawal symptoms that you may find yourself experiencing. And then there are some things that you want to be mindful of when managing withdrawal. And the first thing is, you know, ask for help from your doctor or health professional. You know, someone that you can get some medical advice from, someone that can lead you in the right direction on how to manage the withdrawal symptoms and can give you some information on how to properly receive some type of treatment services for um, addiction. And then stay hydrated. During this withdrawal process, it's very it's very important that you stay hydrated hydrated because you know the water can help you uh, combat the headaches, the sweating, the hunger, and the fatigue, and it could help with reducing the craving. Make sure that you get some rest. You know, sleep should be a good priority or main priority, and make sure that you manage working in some type of rest for your body because going through this withdrawal can be exhausting. Substitute the vaping with some type of healthy snacks, whether it's raw nuts, or fruits, or carrots, or different type of vegetables. You know, we want, to, you know, when you take something away from someone, you always want to make sure that it's replaced with something that's a little more healthy or a lot more healthier. So, you know, instead of the old switcheroo with gum, which, you know, nothing's wrong with that, but try to mix it up a little bit with, um, again, some vegetables, some fruits, maybe some nuts, or maybe some just some healthy alternatives, because a lot of times with the addiction, and especially goes for smokers, the activity of the hand to mouth is very addictive and could be, you know, a trigger for individuals. And so when there isn't something that's healthy to replace that, then we find ourselves vulnerable and too possibly real. And, you know, it's important to get support from your friends and your family and loved ones. You know, this, it, this can be and should be a village approach to uh, healing and, and, and treatment. So, you know, don't suffer in silence. And, you know, again, all of these things are helpful because we want to have a plan and be prepared for possible cravings and possible withdrawal symptoms. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for putting this question up there for the audience. Not a problem. Yes, they're in the uh, they're in the chat. Very nice, Cavell. Very nice. So, um, great information in terms of the um, withdrawal effects. Um, looking at that that slippery slide from use to abuse to dependency to addiction. Very nice. Um, and giving some healthy alternatives as well. Good Thank stuff. You. Thank you so much. So um, the, the piece about the, um, the support and um, just following up on something that Nurse Ann said as well, with, with the step down approach and using different types of therapeutics like the nicotine patch or the, or the gum, you also want to pair it with, as, as you were saying, support from friends and family, but also possibly other professionals, um, your physician or even a smoking cessation uh, professional to help you through the process. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, this definitely is in a situation where you know, we think we have to deal with this on our own or suffer in silence. You know, there's strength in numbers and there's always strength in numbers. And so, you know, we have to do all that we can to make sure that we keep ourselves healthy and we matriculate out of a potential toxic and hazardous practice in our lives, you know. So, we absolutely want to rally the troops, if you will, for support. Yeah. That, that's a good point, Devella. And with that, um, I have a question for you, Nurse Ann. 
Um, is, is, is there some evidence to suggest that smoking and, and vaping makes you or, or um, impacts your immune system in a way to where you might be more vulnerable to different types of respiratory disorders? Yeah, I would say so because, again, of the effect that it has on slowing the blood flow, um, you know, again, the effects it has on the uh, various cells in the body, like, again, we mentioned the lung cells. So it would stand to reason that um, all systems, you know, would probably be unaffected, uh, including the immune in some way. I mean, because, it, again, that nicotine affects all bodies as it relates to cancer, all body parts. So I would think, yeah. too, it would be the immune system, yes. Okay, and this is the time when we really have to safeguard our immune system mm -hmm. um, in, in every way possible. So if this might be one of the, the ways um, for anyone who's listening um, to um, try to incorporate a, a healthier approach uh, going into these winter months and even into the next year, definitely would recommend um, seeking out uh, some services to um, help with ceasing with the vaping or the smoking behaviors. Okay, well, it looks like we're 10 minutes from our ending time. If We'll take uh, some additional questions if there are any. And I would try to play a public service announcement, but you know, last time I did, I <laughs> I left you all. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's the best way to go, right? You go out fighting. So I'll try <laughs> one more time to uh, to take us out. <laughs> Let's see. Unless um. Devel, if there's uh, something else that you would like to uh, address, we could go ahead and do that too. Um, the only other thing that uh, I have for me um, is the, you know, just the resources. And I can talk a little bit about the resources that was presented. And uh, thank you. Yes. The main reason why you know, I selected this particular resource is something that I'm sure we all can relate to. And it's because this particular resource is free. Uh oh. Gotta put that up. <laughs> and so, and so, there you yeah, go. So, Are you able to see that? Absolutely, absolutely. And Ken, if okay. everyone in the participant room, if you can see that, please put a three in the chat for me to let us know that this is visible to everyone. And, you know, the presenters aren't the only one that can see it. So if you can just put the number three, put the number three in the chat to let me know you see it. Excellent. Excellent. OK, excellent. So, yeah, so this is the tobacco program that is sponsored and facilitated in uh, Prince George's County. The location is 425 Brightseed Road, Suite 101D in Landover, Maryland. There is a hotline if you want to make an appointment or if you just have any questions in regards to uh, tobacco and vaping. And so what it provides is smoking cessation classes, uh, patches and gum for assistance with, quit sm with uh, quitting smoking. There are some counseling sessions for individuals. And as mentioned before, the cost of this is free. And just, just let me, you know, expound a little bit about that. Therapy, counseling and treatment in the community isn't always free. So when you found when you find a resource that's free in the community, you definitely want to spread the word. You definitely want to capitalize off of this particular resource because not all treatment services and resources a take your insurance, and a lot of them have an out-of-pocket cost. So this is a hundred percent, absolutely free. Some of the element. Um, 
eligibility. I always destroy the pronunciation of that word. I think I think it's my my list that I have. But you just have to be a PG County resident, um, have a photo ID, and that's it. You know, and it gives you access to this resource. And yes, it's the tobacco program, but it covers vaping as well. So if you all have someone that is struggling with uh, smoking and vaping, you definitely want to provide them with this resource. The other resource is the SAMHSA National Helpline. And if you're outside of PG County, this particular resource is nationwide. So if you have loved ones outside of the PG area or outside of Maryland, this would be a good place where you could go, you could, you could call and get um 24 hour confidential uh, services and consultations and possible referrals to other places for dealing, not just with tobacco or vaping, but, you know, other substance abuse disorders or treatment um, needs as well. They offer support groups and facilities. And so what it does is it helps give you a grid of different uh, sources, excuse me, different resources and treatment options in your community. And so are there any questions about this particular resource? And, you know, that's that's all I got. I mean, that you came correct. That's all right. That's good. And it's free. So um, does this appeal to a particular age group? Uh, I want to say um, from my experience, I want to say that it does not appeal to a specific age group. There was no information that identified that. Uh, so when you're dealing with um, uh, community programs, they may uh, they may separate the group cohort according to um, I guess the age demographic, if you will. But there is, you know, the only eligibility is. Uh, PGCC Prince and County Residency. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Very nice. Very nice. Um, and um, let's see. Um, are there any questions in the chat for uh, Devel about this program or, or anything that we've talked about actually today? Right. Nurse Ann, do you have any final um, words before we end? Well, I think we would um, hope that people would not vape. <laughs> great, great parting words, yes. <laughs> and Devel, is there anything you'd like to say before we end? Uh, just, you know, thank you for participating and, you know, getting some information and some knowledge that will help you and your family and your loved ones. And I, you know, I second, you know, that sentiment of Nurse Ann and, you know, be mindful of your vaping. And if you are engaging in these activities, you know, be proactive with your health and understand that there are some serious risks. So it actually looks like we do have a question. Um, I see a hand raised by o o Joel. Okay, hello. You have a, okay, she actually has a um, actually has a private question, so that's fine. Um, you can actually put that in the chat if you like, and instead of to everyone. I think it has the to the moderators, yeah. I think it has the ability to send it to just one person. Okay, great. All right then. Well, thank you um, all for participating in our eleven o'clock session. We actually have a three thirty session with Nurse um, Arnita Shelton, um, who will be uh, addressing the same uh, topics as Nurse Anne. 
Um, and then uh, Devel and I will I'll join as well. So thank you again for your time and your interest. Um, and join us again for Friday Forum. Sometimes it's an open discussion. Sometimes we actually have programming like this. Um, and then we actually have our program December 1st for World AIDS Day, where we will be doing a virtual program on HIV and AIDS. So thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Devel, I want to make sure we get the uh, question from yeah. the student. Yeah, that's why I was sticking around. Okay, all right. I see folks are parting. Okay, very good. Hi. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, thank you guys. Yes, that we're here. Hi. That was a really amazing class. Like I I that was good. Thank you so much. That was very helpful. I just um I have a really important question and the first is not about the class. It's about my um so I um applied I used the word applied, I registered for four classes on the PGCC thing. And it's right now, today, I'm just finding out that I'm in this class. I didn't know anything about it. I just tried to, um, I was just checking on my grades, and I saw that there was a part that had zeros. And I'm like, I'm doing everything. No, no, I no. This is not a class. This is no class. This is just for fun. Mm -hmm. um, okay. we, are on, we are on all the students' schedule on Blackboard <laughs> so that you have access to our program. That's okay. all. Do you get credit for it? No. Nope. Okay, but I still like the class, so I'm still like to come. I'm so excited. And we want you to come back. Yeah, it's free, and Absolutely. we're here every Friday. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much. That's what I, I just know. Said. Please, no, no worries, no stress. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. I will definitely come next week. You're welcome. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. You bye bye. Too. <laughs> bye -bye. That was awesome. <laughs> yes, it was. Can you imagine stressing out about seeing all these zeros? <laughs> yeah, boy. I, I probably would have did the same never thing. Had. Yeah, Woo! I would have did the same thing. Look, I need to talk to y'all after class. <laughs> what I meant to what I meant to uh say to you earlier yeah. is um mm -hmm. in the event we needed it, I have yes. collected I collected some myths about vaping. So if there is uh -huh. like um, some space that's needed, we can implement that anywhere okay. in the program for later on today. We can start with it. We could use it as a filler. We can do whatever. I think it's about maybe five to six different myths. So we could do like a, okay. a poll. We could do a poll or it could yeah. just be an information session. So I have that on standby. I meant to mention that earlier and I got sidetracked in the video so it kind of just left my mind I was just watching the video so I just I meant to say that earlier no so if, if we need it okay. it's on standby wonderful okay all right yeah uh, I'm not not sure what happened with my tech I'm glad that um these things that never happened before you know just decide to happen while I'm working <laughs> And I need the internet. But um, <laughs> okay. thanks for carrying on. No, so no problem. I, I mean, I think yeah. No, I was going to say, you know, it's, I, I don't know what the situation is because it happens to you. It happens to me. Like, you just, we just never know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? And so it just, it just is what it is. So. <laughs> I wouldn't even trip. Like there, there, there's no way to pinpoint where the issue lies because there, times, there are times where the same thing that's happening to you, the the, the audio doesn't work, uh, my camera hasn't worked, sharing my screen hasn't worked at times. I mean, you know, 
Okay. It 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 is what it so is. So there you go. It is yeah. technology. Okay. All righty. <laughs> okay. Well, um, enjoy the rest of the day until I see you later this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I need to prep for my sessions. So I will see you this afternoon. Okay. All right, Devel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.